everybody, Joe Joseph here for thedailysheeple.com, and this is your news shot. The Wall Street Journal um, has some great tech news today. It says, in 10 years, your iPhone won't be a phone anymore. It says, Siri will be the conductor of a suite of devices, all tracking your interactions and anticipating your next moves. Interestingly enough, um, we are already seeing the start of that now in 20, 2017 uh, with uh, customized and targeted ad campaigns. If you notice that when you go surfing on a website, um, especially if your ad, your, your pop up blocker, your ad blocker doesn't doesn't block it, you'll find that they'll advertise things and goods that you may have been looking at based on your browsing history. So they're already doing this in a, in a way, but with the advancement of technology, you have to imagine that augmented reality is going to really start to take hold in society and our everyday life. It says it's 2027 and you're walking down the street confident you'll arrive at your destination even though you don't know where it is. You might, you may not even remember why your device is telling you to go there. There's a voice in your ear giving you turn-by-turn -turn directions and in between prepping you for this meeting. Oh, right. You're supposed to be interviewing a dog whisperer for your pet psychiatry business. You arrive at the coffee shop looking around quizzically and a woman you don't recognize approaches. A display only you can see highlights her face and prints her name next to it in crisp block lettering. Terminator style. Afterwards, you'll get an automatically generated transcript of everything you two said. As the iPhone this week marks its 10th anniversary of its first sale, it remains one of the most successful consumer products in history. But by the time it celebrates its 20th anniversary, the phone concept will be entirely uprooted. The dog whisperer scenario will be brought to you even if you don't have an iPhone in your pocket. And it's absolutely right. Augmented reality is going to play a much deeper role in society as things advance. You're going to have basically a body area network of computers, batteries, and sensors residing on our wrists and our ears, on our faces, our clothes. With nanotechnology, they can now embed circuits into your clothing, smart clothing, smart clothing that can change its appearance. You know, while you're walking down the street, oh, I don't want a blue shirt, I want a red shirt. No problem, smart shirt, change color. It's coming. You know, glasses, uh, you're like Google Glass, we had the Google Glasses. Um, of course, it's a very archaic version of what will eventually be commonplace in the marketplace. And it's really scary on one hand to think that privacy as we know it or what's left of it will be a thing of the past and that the generations, the millennials now, that our adults, young adults, will really never know what privacy is unless there's some sort of major setback in technology because it's like everything else, you know. Just because laws get passed and protections are put in place that people assume protect your privacy, you really don't have any privacy. The NSA... Blanket records everything you do, everything you say, everything you buy, everywhere you go. It doesn't matter what you do. They collect it. They aggregate it. Now they say, well, you know, well, uh, we don't really look at it. Yeah. Where there's a will, there's a way. And if they want to make an enemy out of you, they can do it in a heartbeat. All they got to do is utilize one of their trusty, rusty algorithms, Lay your life out on the time the timeline, cut and paste, and man, they can make you anything. They can make you be anywhere. They know where you are at any point in time. And it's really, again, a scary thought. Are there benefits to being able to uh, have this information at your fingertips at any point in time? Yes, of course, it's convenient. Yes, of course, it'll save you time and give you more time to do the things that you want to do. However, what you sell in return for that, to me, is absolutely unacceptable. And there has to be a solution to that problem. There has to be a line that's not crossed and that's respected. And the only way to do that is to provide accountability. Now, how that happens, 
I don't know. How it manifests itself, I don't know. You certainly cannot expect governments, whether at the local, state, or federal level, to reliably police themselves. It's almost like telling their, your kids to discipline themselves when they're wrong. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, they'll, they'll get right on that. Yeah, so again, you know, is there benefit to the advancement of technology? Of course, and I'm certainly not anti-technology, but what I am is certainly um, when the violation of privacy comes about and rights that we have not given up, by the way, are forcefully and under duress taking away from us, then, I mean, we have to do something, folks. And if it means that we have to boycott technology for a little while to make make it known that this is what we want, and by God, we'll stop at nothing to get it, then that's what we have to do. I'm Joe Joseph. This was the DailySheeple.com's news shot. Feel free to comment below and visit our website at thedailysheeple.com. Have a great day.